Hello, how are you guys? I hope you are well and healthy. My name is Joni and this is my channel Joni Loves and today I'm talking about Dr Pimple Popper's nighttime skincare routine for dry skin. It's a go to bed series with Harper Bazaar. I'll put the original video down below for you to have a look. Mm -hmm. This is interesting for me because Dr Sandra Lee aka the Pimple Popper is a US board certified dermatologist mm -hmm. and a cosmetic surgeon too. So it's probably a little bit unusual for an esthetician to chat about what a dermatologist is doing to your skin but it is interesting and I think that it's going to maybe give you a few tips and I hope we get tips from her as well. <laughs> yes I do. This woman's done everything. She's nearly 50. She'll be 50 in December and she looks great. She does and she's got a big Instagram following. Millions and millions on Instagram so this is a, a clever lady and we have to think about all of that when we take a look at what she does. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. That would be cool. What a long day. I am ready for bed. So why don't you come to bed with me? As a board certified dermatologist, I um, am trained, you know, we are trained to be the experts at all conditions of the skin, the hair, and the nails. And so we know a lot about these products that are out there, the skincare products, and know about the ingredients and what they do. But we definitely certainly have levels of how much we care about it. Um, some people have a really deep interest in it. I definitely am always aware of what I'm putting on my skin, but I am not crazy about it. I don't have a lot of steps in my regimen, but I do know my skin type. I am dry and I'm on the sensitive side. So I like to keep things to a minimum and I don't like to do things that aggravate my skin. The first step I'm gonna do is take off these eyelashes. I don't want wear eyelashes every day, but I had to do it today, of course, because you know, we're gonna be on camera. And I want to use a really good oil um, makeup remover. I, I've used this for years since I've been a teenager. It's by Facile by Lancome. And I like to use, I found these really amazing actually um, cotton remover pads. I don't know, I'm a dork. Maybe everybody knows about this. But I don't like the ones you can buy in stores because they get like very linty. And I don't like Kleenex because it will tear. This is like Kleenex with a pad in it. And you can really soak them really well with these oils and just like dab them across your face. I don't like to rub because again, I'm very sensitive. So I like to just dab and let it soak up and remove my eye makeup. So that's the first thing that I do. So the next step is... Wow, so mm, <laughs> that was a bad start for me. That was a bad start. Biofacile Eye Makeup Remover by Lancome, I'm going to tell you, has got essential oils in it too. Geranium and is one of them. But the, that's a, these are known... Um, skin sensitizers, geranium oils, one of them, and citronella is the other one. And you've got to really be careful with that, having those ingredients when you've got sensitive eyes. I've got sensitive eyes, I wear contact lenses, and this, I'm surprised that she says she's dry sensitive skin as well. And you know, she's using this, it's not cruelty free, I think it's rubbish, <laughs> I do. And I've had lots of clients, including myself, that have taken reactions to this eye makeup remover so I'm going to say right away nope I didn't like it at all nope Sandra I have to have a chat with you about that wonder why she used that one she'd been using it a long time it's old-fashioned it's not you know things have progressed since Lancome brought this out mm, no I don't like that that's a bad start the little cotton pads I thought were good lint free I think that's a great idea when you're taking off eye makeup remover especially that the lint free won't aggravate your eyes that's good. I have to say though, didn't like the way she used it. She said she doesn't rub eyes. Well, I thought she'd rubbed her eyes a little bit there. What I would do is absolutely soak the cotton pad with your eye makeup remover and hold it against the eye and gently tap it to dissolve the eye makeup and make it easy for it to dissolve. And literally, if you leave that on for a number of seconds and then take away, most of the eye makeup should be on the pad. It should be. And if it's not, it's not a good eye makeup remover. And that one is rubbish. So I'm just saying that this is a good start, <laughs> isn't it? Oh dear, the Joni is stuck again. I'm using my SLMD cleansing wipes. These are my favorite wipes. 
And also I dab at my face. I try to get out the excess makeup. And I don't rub because I'm more prone to getting rashes or irritation. And when you do that, you get more wrinkles because those change your skin and make you look more wrinkled and more and older, which we don't like. I mean, even like a, a washcloth is gonna create micro tears. So anything that's kind of abrading your skin. So you just need to be gentle. I use a hydrating facial cleanser. Wow, right away, face wipes. Oh my God, she said she's got dry, sensitive skin and she's using face wipes. Face wipes are full of fragrance and bad chemicals. I've talked about this before. You can check out this video if you want to, but here's the thing. Face wipes, I've got lots of bad chemicals because think about it, you're opening a packet, the air's getting in and the companies know this and they've got to try to make sure that the preservatives in here are strong enough to keep the one at the bottom of the packet still usable. And you know, they dry out all of that thing, but they're so, I don't, mm, that is sensitizing for skin. So they sensitize skin. Apart from that, I know they're convenient, I know they're quick, but I'm telling you, I've seen so much damage and she says that she's got sensitive skin. My goodness, she should not be using them. They're going to make her skin more sensitive and I really want to tell her that. But the thing is, it's her own brand. Da, 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 da. <sighs> That's why she's punting them on this channel. Mm -hmm. That's not good. This is her own brand and that's what she's why she's selling this idea of the face wipes in. Did you see her? patting over her eyes with the face wipes. My goodness, no, no, they are rubbish. Apart from that, face wipes are not environmental friendly. No, they're not. I mean, think about all the sewer blockages. I think it's 93% of sewers in the world are blocked by face wipes. So I need to have a chat with this Sandra. I do. Someone please tell her for me, mm -hmm, please. And I alternate it with a salicylic acid cleanser because my two issues is that I'm really dry and it's because I'm darker complected, I'm prone to brown spots. So I like to use my SLMD salicylic acid cleanser and switch it out every other day with just a hydrating fa facial cleanser. This one's by CeraVe. And salicylic acid is really great because it's an exfoliant. It's gonna exfoliate and get rid of those dry, dull, dead skin cells on the surface of your skin so your skin is more radiant it's going to actually settle down within your pores too and help prevent new acne or from, from blackheads from forming and the trick is with salicylic acid cleansers is you can actually leave it on your face for a couple minutes if you wanted to and really that can help to increase the penetrance of it i mean i think in a cleanser you're going to wash or wash it off ultimately obviously but it's going to really help to get off any of this extra gunk that I miss with my wipes or with my um, eye makeup remover. So one thing that's really important, I think that's very important about washing. Wow, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. What am I thinking? I'm thinking she keeps going on about her dry, sensitive skin and that she's prone to, well, I could tell you that she's definitely prone to, it looks to me as if she's prone to pigmentation. Uh, salicylic acid, however, really for someone with dry, sensitive skin, I would not be recommending that for someone with dry, sensitive skin. I wouldn't, no. Um, so it's quite, this one is her own make. Again, her own brand. Hello. <laughs> but it's got witch hazel, eucalyptus, menthol. These are all sensitizing to dry, sensitive skin types. So has she got the skin type right for herself? Because it doesn't sound like it. Using salicylic acid is what she said there's absolutely true. It cleans out the pores. It does exfoliate the skin, but it's it's a BHA, beta hydroxy acid, which means it is oil soluble. So it really does clean the pores out. Great for someone with an oily skin. It's an oil soluble cleanser. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and it cleans the pores out. So, you know, why is she using that when she's got dry sensitive? doesn't make a hundred percent sense to me it really doesn't it's only 20 quid for that cleanser it's an okay price point and then she's using the hydrating cleanser the CeraVe now the funny thing is the CeraVe one is also not a bad price 15 quid mm -hmm. but it's getting mixed reviews and I have personally treated people with eczema who have got have used this cleanser and it doesn't do a thing for their skin so I'm going to say this to you 
if it's doing anything for your skin please put it in the comments below because I have not heard someone or met or treated someone who's really had great skin using that cleanser. I haven't. It has got good things in it. It's got ceramides in it, which is great for dry skin. So it's funny how she's using that in alternate nights and the salicylic the other nights. Mm, that's funny because it is definitely for dry skin because it's got ceramide. It's ceramide rich this and it's also got hyaluronic acid in it, CeraVe. So, you know, it's not for someone who has got an oily skin and anyway the other thing as well is it's got two parabens in it you know i can talk about parabens all day long i don't like them uh-huh things are becoming paraben free some of these formulas why are they not doing that I, you know I, I think it's strange because you'll see most companies now are going paraben free because there is some evidence out there have a look at it yourself i don't like parabens myself so no, I'm not going to give that a thumbs up for her. I'm surprised. But CeraVe was founded by dermatologists originally. So I wonder if that's why she's plugging it a little bit because maybe she knew one of the original founders of the company. <laughs> Being a dermatologist, I'm just saying. That's maybe, the, that's maybe the reason. But it was purchased by L'Oreal in 2017, CeraVe. So it's all about marketing and putting it out there and... You know, that's what L'Oreal is good at, I have to say. Marketing BS. ...face that I know is from a dermatologist perspective is when you're washing your face, you're actually getting rid of moisture on your face. So you really, so you really want to not go really hot and you don't want to go really cold either. You don't want to shock your, your system really. You don't want to shock your skin. Lukewarm water is the best. And I don't rub my face either. I just wash off the salicylic acid. So again, I dab, and I also, what's so important at this point is when your skin is still moist, that is the prime time to moisturize your skin, actually, because if your skin is wet, the um, just out in the air, your the, the moisture evaporates, and it actually pulls that moisture, the air pulls that moisture out of your skin, and you get drier. That's why you kind of get that tight feeling after you wash your face and you sit around for a while. So this is the ideal time to put a moisturizer on. I like my SLMD Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Hyaluronic Acid, you've probably seen it in a lot of products these days. Well, Hyaluronic Acid is hydrophilic, meaning that it draws in water. When you put it on your skin, it's really gonna seal in that moisture and minimize what we call trans epidermal water loss. And I'm more prone to that than others because I have dry skin. I actually have eczema, which is means that my barrier on my skin is not as good as other people so I tend to lose moisture more easily so I really need extra moisturizer in fact I could put Vaseline I could put like petrolatum on my wow I think that's amazing she's just said she's got eczema uh-huh I do especially when she's used in my opinion and um, the first thing the eye makeup remover bad for eczema the cleansing wipes very bad for eczema and then a salicylic acid cleanser when you've got eczema Mm. You know, eczema, she's chatted about it a little bit there. I thought it was really good that she mentioned to use lukewarm water. Don't use hot water on your skin. I do love that. You don't, you know, someone with eczema has to keep the moisture in their skin. So she's absolutely right. Using the hyaluronic acid serum, I do like that, that she's put that on. Um, so that's good that she's done that, 100%. It's only £43 for, this is our SLMD Hyaluronic Acid Serum Secret. It's got squalene in it, fantastic antioxidant moisturiser, sodium hyaluronate and butylene glycol. That is a good serum that she's using for someone with a dry, sensitive skin. <laughs> so that bit's right. I didn't realise though that she should not be using, if she's got eczema, anything with a fragrance in it, she shouldn't be using that at all. No, I'm, I, you know, face wipes are going to totally aggravate that. Anyway, let's go on. Um, I think it was good that she mentioned putting on the serum straight on after you've patted your skin dry. I think it's funny when she's applying things, she doesn't apply things gently. I, I feel that she doesn't. I'd like to get her and just calm her down a bit or something and say, come on, Sandra, it should be your ritual. It should be good fun. It should be nice and relaxing. It's your time. Maybe it was because it was on camera and that's, that's why it's having that feel, maybe face and and it won't break me out I'm so dry in terms of things that I wish that I um, 
had not done in the past. I wish I didn't rub my eyes so much. You know, I love my cats. I have cats and I can't give them up, but I probably shouldn't have cats in the, have had cats in the first place because I'm a little allergic to them and any kind of inflammation that you get, any irritation, any kind of like rash that you get can really age you actually. It, it's cumulative and it, and it really increases the wrinkles and increases the aging. But I also feel like, thank goodness I have good genes for my mom, so hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll balance out somehow. So at this point, I like to take a little break and let all of this soak in for a moment. And I like to put on my deodorant. At least it gives me a little break because this is a little secret that I have for you. Deodorant is best applied at night. It is most effective at night because you, you're putting it on when your sweat glands are the most dormant. So it's going to make it more effective. So this is the time that I put on deodorant. The reason I want this to settle in is because I like to put my moisturizer on before I put on any retinol or retinoid. These are products that we know as dermatologists, they've been around for generations and we know that they help to minimize fine lines and wrinkles over time. Retinol is an over-the-counter uh, version of this product. There's a prescription variety as well, but they are a little bit irritating to the skin. So I like to put moisturizer on before and I like to let it sit for a little bit. There is um, some question as to whether uh, retinol or retinoids interact with a moisturizer or lose their effectiveness because you apply them the same time as moisturizer. And I think there is some truth to that. And some people might actually put a retinol on before they put on moisturizer on. I just like to put the moisturizer on first because I really want to keep that moisture in my skin after I wash it. And I like to just let it sit for a little bit and then apply the retinol. And that makes me feel like it's going to be, it's going to be pretty effective. This is something that I actually, I, I, I live by as well. The healing ointments, these are really important for me, again, because I'm saying I'm super dry. I put them everywhere. I put them in all around my lips and around my eyes at night. Um, and some people, be careful putting them around your eyes. They could promote milia, which are like these little baby cysts around the eyes. So some people can't tolerate that, but I can because I'm very dry. So I put them there to protect the lip and it will irritate you. I get acne bumps every now and then. It's sort of like a uh, hormonal thing, which is with most of us women, we get hormonal acne. Usually for that sort of thing, I'm gonna... Mm. <gasps> There's a whole mix of messages there, okay. So she's putting on the, she's talking about retinol and at her age, I'm just saying this because of her coloring as well. Um, this it looks a bit as if it's an even skin tone. I definitely think that she would benefit from a retinol, definitely. Um, if you were using a retinol, it's really good and best applied first onto dry skin, onto clean skin, and then, you know, build up used to it depending on the strength of it. But you could let it absorb and then put some moisturiser on, on top. But she, you know, I don't think it's a good idea. You are definitely weakening the strength of the retinol if you put moisturiser on first and then the retinol on top. If you mix it with moisturiser anyway before or after, you're definitely weakening retinol. But it is quite a good idea to really um, do that and use a moisturiser after you apply it when you first try retinol. I think that's a good idea to get accustomed to retinol so that you don't have this retinization they call it where your skin's flaking off too much so it's always best to start with a low percentage of retinol and really getting the, the good advice from your esthetician or your dermatologist as to which way to go here um i think it's funny how she's not putting retinol on she's not talking about it instead she's put this hyaluronic acid serum which i did like i did like that <laughs> i did like one of the products over and then she's put on the cerave healing ointment um, and she put that on over her lips and round her eyes. <laughs> you know, I'm not happy about that. I really, I don't mind it on the lips. I think it's great. I've got to say CeraVe healing ointment is an expensive Vaseline. I've said it, okay, it was £28 and it's 45% petrolatum. Come on, you know, a Vaseline, a little tub of Vaseline. Uh-huh. That's the way to go. You don't need to get the healing ointment. I just think, I know it's got a couple of other things in it, but it's 45% petrolatum. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? But she put it around her eyes and, you know, it's because I think she's got eczema around her eyes. I'm just assuming that, I have to say, because why else would you put, that's an occlusive, putting a Vaseline. It's going to stop you losing your own moisture. But for 
God's sake, can I say that on YouTube? She is absolutely using stuff that's drying her eyes out. She used that really rubbish eye makeup remover and then she put on um, face wipe on top. She's drying her eye skin out and, you know, she's quite pigmented around this area. You can see that around here. Um, and I think that she'd be, I really do think she'd be benefiting from a really nourishing eye cream that's got some skin lightening benefits in it that would take away some of that discoloration off her eyes so i wouldn't really put it on it's like you know it's like putting vaseline over your eyes that some people that will aggravate i'm sure some people that would aggravate mm -hmm. <laughs> hormonal thing which is with most of us women we get hormonal acne usually for that sort of thing i'm gonna put a benzoyl peroxide spot treatment on the area um, so I, I usually just... Now that's interesting. She's got a dry, sensitised skin that's got eczema, yet she gets acne breakouts. Mm -hmm. Well, hormonal, yes, definitely. I think it must be hormonal at her age, um, having an acne breakout. And she said benzoyl peroxide, and that is really a great spot treatment. Although I'd be careful, I'm going to say be careful of buying that yourself. Um, over the counter. I'm not awful keen on that. I do think it's good if you get it prescribed by a dermatologist or a esthetician who can maybe help you with your spots and your acne. Get a really good facial. Uh-huh. Do that. Maybe get that get going. But mm, benzoyl peroxide does work. It does work. For the thing, I'm going to put a benzoyl peroxide spot treatment on the area. Um, so I, I usually just, benzoyl peroxide is really great because it's antibacterial and uh, I just will usually just spot treat the area. That works in two ways. It's gonna help destroy bacteria that are really thriving in that area. And also, it really keeps your hands off the area. The other thing that I can do, that I'm sorry most of you guys can't do, just because I'm a dermatologist, I inject my own pimples. If I have one that I feel that's under the surface of the skin, if you have a dermatologist that you um, that you see, you can potentially see them and they can give you a little shot of low potency corticosteroid in the area and it gets rid of the zit within 24 hours. So in general, I can get big ones, but I usually get rid of them within 24 hours. Condition, But throughout our life, we're still getting acne, adult acne. Well, it's really common and it is completely... So she's just really affirmed or confirmed, which one is it? That, that's why she's using salicylic acid cleanser. Mm -hmm. The salicylic acid is helping to prevent get her acne breakouts. Right, it's making a little bit of sense now. It's making a little bit of sense. But this woman injects her own spots. <laughs> How cool is that? She is one cool woman, isn't she? That is so cool. I've heard about, I've never had it done, but I do know that a lot of the celebs get that done, especially before big shows or big exhibitions or when they could, you know, acting when they're doing stuff or on the red carpet, they'll get that done. But I think that's, she can do that herself. How cool is that? I mean, how cool is it? And by hormones. But remember, it's a good thing in a sense because it shows that you have hormones, that you're, that's a youthful thing. And to have oil in your face to get acne is a youthful thing. So um, try to remind yourself of that. The problem is that people will try to pop a pimple too early because it's there and you can't keep your hands off of it. I get it. If you just squeeze a pimple when it's too early, it will just get bigger and redder and angrier and end up worse. Um, the ideal time to really extract a pimple is when they're as close to the surface as they can be. You want to make sure any kind of pimple comes as close to the surface as you can because then you can just gently nick it if you do anything at all. Like, I'm a dermatologist, I'm not gonna tell you to do anything. I don't want you to do anything. I, 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 I can't, because I don't want you to be unsafe, but I know people are gonna do it, so that's my best advice for you. To just know that the more superficial something is in your skin, the less risk you have of permanently scarring yourself. A lot of blemishes that are red or brown, they're gonna go away, but that's probably from a lot of pushing and manipulating, so trying to leave things alone is the best thing to do. So I have a little zit here on my chin. I usually get them around my chin uh, certain times of the month. And so I actually have um, my own stock of low potency corticosteroids at home. I take them with me on vacations because that's usually when you get a zit. So I usually pull up a little bit of my little syringe here and I use a baby syringe needle and 
I just take my alcohol and clean the area off. Don't learn from me, okay? I just inject. So, but I'm not doing that because I want you to like learn from me. I mean, that's what we do in the office and you can see how easy it is. Um, and so a dermatologist can really do that and can, especially if you have a big event, like you have a prom, you have a wedding, uh, your photo's being taken, it's really great to have your, uh, your zit injected because it can make, get rid of them like so quickly. Mm, I thought that was really good. I thought that was really good. I did. I like that bit at the end. Dr. Pimple Popper injecting her own pimples ah oh, how good is that i know <laughs> um so that's something to think about isn't it that you can go to your dermatologist and get that done a hobby for a big event for a wedding mm -hmm. something to think about all in all did i think that was a good nighttime skincare routine i thought it was really mixed actually really mixed um truthfully truthfully i think um i wish i could speak to her and really chat to her about her skin and see what I thought was what else she could add to it but I'm I'm positive that she wouldn't listen <laughs> I'm positive she wouldn't listen but um the hyaluronic acid secret serum I did like that I did like that the rest of it mm, I can see why she's she's using the salicylic cleanser now and she's using things that, so she's got dry sensitive eczema skin and she gets you know flare-ups of acne on her chin so hey what can I say that happens to the best of us that happens to the best of us so anyway I hope that was interesting for you it certainly was really interesting for me um, and remember it is my opinion as an esthetician I am not a dermatologist and I, I have to finish by saying that um, I would put in a couple of other things I think definitely a retinal is something that I would definitely tell Sandra Lee, Dr. Sandra Lee to use because it'll even her skin tone 100% and it might prevent the breakout of acne. Uh huh, it can. It'll normalize the skin a bit and it'll make it much healthier. I think that she really possibly, I, I'm not sure why she's not using or she didn't talk about one. Maybe, I don't know, she got one in a range, whatever. So, anyway, that's another one for this week. So, take care. Remember, if you've got any skin questions, you can email me at info at jlformulations.com I will try to help you in any way I can and if you get anything you want to say please put it in the comments below I am looking for comments so if anything you disagree with put it in let's have a chat so take care hope everything goes well with you have a great weekend bye